I don't have an intro for this video. I couldn't figure out what I could do with the limited amount that I have. So instead, I will improv my intro. This is gonna be bad. Basically, I was sitting down thinking about the different games that I have played and all the different reviews that I want to do, and I was like, I feel like I should take on a smaller game. And so I was like, well, you know, I should review Lords of the Realm 2. It's a game that I have played a lot of, however, it's not a very complicated game. There's not very much to it. But then I kind of approached it again, and I took some time to write out a script, and of course, I wrote way more than I probably should have, and even then I go back and I'm reading over my script as I'm doing my voiceover for it, and I'm just thinking, I'm missing stuff, I should include more details, so, you know, I would like to do some kind of funny skit for an intro, but I mean, I really can't think of an intro for this, so yeah, sorry. Lords of the Realm 2 is a strategy game developed by Impressions Games and released October 31st, 1996. This is yet another game that is not very well known, but certainly near and dear to my own heart. I would play this game on our own Windows 95 computer, a computer which is still working, I might add, unless my parents got rid of it. Hey mom, I've got a weird question for ya. I really wish I could show you the disc and box that we owned. I swear we actually had those. But I was a menace as a kid and probably destroyed it with zero regard for wanting to show it on the internet in 20 years. <laughs> Kids those days. Am I right? And if I never opened any of my Pokemon packs, I'd be a millionaire! Well, that would feel like it. Actually, we had several game boxes which I thought was garbage at the time, but now I would just really, really like to get my hands on them. Maybe I should see if eBay has anything. The story of Lords of the Realm 2 is summed up in its opening cinematic. Oh god, I didn't even know he was sick! You gotta have that drama aspect. Who knows why or how he died? I have more right to rule than most. There will be dark days ahead. If it's to be war, then so be it. Come, we have work to do. What a, what a happy character we're playing. Self-righteous prick. Lords of the Realm 2 is actually the game that single-handedly made me interested in the Dark Ages. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. Most of my favorite video games had swords, bows, siege engines, various other medieval weapons and battles. Lots of battles. So, for those of you who skipped history class, the Dark Ages is a time when they did not have electricity, and that's why they called it the Dark Ages. Hey, you're watching my videos. Who's to blame for that pun, really? No. The Dark Ages took place during the European Middle Ages, roughly 400 and 1000 AD. Historians don't like calling it the Dark Ages though, mostly because it sounds awesome and people who are scientifically minded don't like it when things sound metal. Now that I've offended several historians, let's move on to talk about Lords of the Realm 2 gameplay. For those who don't know me already, I have a tendency to go into way too much detail on small things that not everyone appreciates. So before I get crazy distracted, let's sum up the basics for how to play and how to win a Lords of the Realm 2 game. To summarize the pop-up notifications at the start of a game, you make sure your people are well fed and they have babies. Then you get weapons either by making them or buying them. Then you build an army. Then you defeat the other nobles on the map. Okay, so that's how you win in a nutshell, but as you might imagine, it's not nearly as simple as all that. 
A big detail to keep in mind is that the game is split up between two very clear and very different gameplay modes. Economic, or political, or whatever you want to call the top worldview. This is where you build wealth, people, weapons, army, gather resources, build castles. Think of this as the strategic mode, mode of the game. The other aspect of the game is battles. This is where you give commands to units using a top-down camera watching the units battle through a bird's eye view. Think of this as the tactical mode of the game. I think one of the charms of Lords of the Realm 2 is how much control you have in the game. The amount of detail you have in a game can make it or break it, it's very much a balance. Too much control and people get overwhelmed. Too little control and we don't feel like we're actually making choices. Let's start with strategic view first. You can set rations for how much your people eat. You can set them to eat cows or wheat. I like to imagine it's literal. You've got people eating live cattle or raw unbreadified wheat. You can drop down how much your people eat. Sometimes you're forced to have the rations because food supplies are low. But you can also double rations to help promote good health, higher population, and happier people. But I've rarely increased rations. I tend to hoard food to myself, much like in real life. Ah, uh, yeah. This will last me for a couple snack attacks. So like the end of the day. You also set taxes. As a kid, I refused to tax my peasants because I remembered how everyone complained about taxes in the cartoons from this era. So I wasn't going to add to the problem. Robin Hood, you would have been my friend. Rob, Rob, do you hear me, Rob? We could have been friends. We're both hunter mains on World of Warcraft. Rob. Unfortunately, I do tax my peasants now, but only because someone's got to pay for the roads, the food supplies, and the protection. This is how a dictatorship starts, people. Also, you can't build roads in this game, so no clue who's maintaining those, but shh, shh, don't tell, don't tell my people. Shh, shh, shh. What's significant about taxes is they're your source of income. The more people you have, the more tax percentage brings in. But beware taxing your people too much. I pride myself on keeping my people at 100 happiness. You're actually in safe margins until roughly 60 happiness. Once your province dips below 40 happiness, the people start to talk about revolt. Don't worry, you have a lot of heads up because your announcer is just, no, oh, they've been talking in the court. The people are displeased. And then right before they're about to revolt, like you're, you'll get a pop-up that'll say, do something, don't let them revolt. And no, that's not just because the peasants at this time were quite revolting. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys watched my videos for this nonsense. If you click on the town center, you can dictate what your peasants work on. Trust me, I feel like an arrogant noble by referring to my people as peasants, but they are peasants until you give them a job to do. Then they're herders, farmers, lumberjacks, blacksmiths, etc. If you ever see people chilling in the middle square, put those suckers to work! There's no point in idle peasants ever. They must work for the state. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. More political quotes go here. Glory for Estatska! Glory, greatest country! <coughs> Are you tired of economic explanations yet? Well, guess what? We're still just getting started, but I'll hurry it up. You have field maintenance. I'm softcore though, so I don't have any advanced farming on where you need to rotate your crops. Actually, there are several different special advanced settings you can turn on, including Fog of War and Army Foraging, where your army now requires food as well. All of which will increase the difficulty of the game, but... Uh, I play Lords of the Realm 2 because there's a little boy inside of my heart who wants to play video games, watch cartoons, and do martial arts. And that little Atratsu will not be slaughtered in adulthood. I feel like I'm Peter Pan over here. I never want to grow up. I'm a real boy. Oh wait, that's Pinocchio. <laughs> Whoops. There are actually several roaming merchants in each map. You'll see them moving around the map. If one of these is in your province, you can buy and sell with them. This comes in handy if you're trying to grow wheat at the start of the game, because you don't start out with wheat. 
or need weapons, or really in need of any supply of any sort. Beware though, the prices are quite hefty. On that note though, let's talk about what you can use your crowns on. So first and foremost, you get crowns from taxes or selling to a merchant. You can spend crowns on buying supplies from merchants, you can spend crowns on paying for your own army, You each turn you need to pay your troops. You can also hire mercenaries if they're available in your town, you can bribe other nobles, you can also send gifts of gold to other nobles. Alright, so we've indirectly talked about resources, let's jump right into that topic next. There's a maximum of two resource gathering nodes per province. Some advanced map provinces will only have one resource gathering node though. Each province has fields which can be used for food generation, either wheat or cattle, but resources can happen to be between the choices of lumber, stone, and ore. Normally the first province you're given will have a forestry and a mine, or lumber mill or mine, I don't know. The guy says forestry on, or forestry off, whenever you click on it. Anyway, this is very good for making weapons, whereas lumber mill and a quarry is very good for constructing castles. We're almost to the good stuff, just bear with me for a few more details on the strategic mode. You'll notice the map on the top right of the screen and the buttons next to the map. These all give you detailed stats on your provinces, population, food supply, happiness, and it also gives you a zoomed out view. At the bottom you have the end turn button. Lords of the Realm 2 is a turn based game. Above the end turn button you have, from the left to the right, the army window, overall noble comparisons, the supplies tab, which allows you to send supplies between counties, and the castle building tab, and lastly the diplomacy tab. Oh, and a real quick note about diplomacy, it actually kinda matters in this game. Originally, when I say originally, I had a different game. The game that I play on Steam has an expansion pack on it. The original game, the AI didn't do jack when you insulted them. They didn't care whatsoever, they did nothing differently. They would fight you the same way. But now if you anger the AI, they will sabotage you. I have warned you many times not to interfere with my affairs, but you would not listen. So be it. Now you will pay the price. I was so unprepared at first that I was just completely shocked and did not expect it at all when an army went to stomp all over my province's fields, burn my villages, and ignore my army and castle. I can't even describe to you how shocking it was. It was like being against myself because I have been known to pull off that kind of stunt when I'm really mad at an AI. Yeah, just, just saying. And guess what I did after receiving such treatment? That's right, I did it right back. Destroy these crops. You stand like a sniveling child, hurling words where your deeds dare not tread. Excuse me, let's talk about battles. So, after you've built up the population and mastered the economics of sovereignty, you're all set to build yourself an army. But oh no, look at all these choices, whatever will you do? Don't worry, your boy Atratsu is here to help. Let's first talk about the staple units, the swordsmen and archers. The swordsmen are relatively slow moving armored tanks. They perform well against everyone, except crossbowmen. 
The archers do small amounts of damage, but they have farther range than crossbowmen. This makes them ideal defensive units for castles. Speaking of crossbowmen, they are the second and only other ranged unit. They have some armor, so they move slower than archers, they do significantly more damage than archers, and they hit armored targets much harder. The downside is that their range is almost half of that of an archer. But when you hear the whoop, 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 noises of a crossbowman, you know somebody is gonna die. Next, let's talk about the fastest moving units, macemen and knights. Knights are actually the best unit in the game. They're given horse, so they move fastest. They also have the best armor. Basically, they're swordsmen with horses. 10 out of 10. Beautiful. Love them. Macemen, on the other hand, well, they're glass cannons. They move very fast, they do a good amount of damage, and this fast movement and high damage makes them a very good choice for ambushing unprepared archers or smashing through any low armored unit. Now let's talk about the heaviest unit, the pikemen. Sir, of course, sir. Of course, sir. Just so you're not confused, uncontrolled provinces will sometimes progress far enough that they get their own pikemen. They're known as spearmen, but this is, is basically the same unit in this game. Pikes are the bane of knights and swordsmen. Really, they're the bane of anything attacking in melee range. The problem with them? They are so slow. Like, ridiculously slow. If each unit had a race in the game, the order of fast to slowest is... Knights, Macemen, Peasants, Archers, Crossbowmen, Swordsmen, Pikemen. Oh, what's that? I didn't mention Peasants can fight? If you don't assign any weapons to a Peasant in an army, you will make an army of Peasants. And Peasants have two uses. Digging up moats, and being cannon fodder. Just a side note here, I've played this game so much that the sound clips that are said by the soldiers and the narrator are so firmly inside of my head that I can never stop thinking about them. So I could turn the sound off and I would still hear when I selected a group of archers. Okay, my lord! Okay, my lord! Where to this time? Where to this time? Actually, that wasn't the archers at all. That's a bad example. Um, I'm just always thinking about I'm always hearing the noises from them. We'll be shot to pieces! We'll be shot okay, to pieces! Okay, my lord! Quick march! Quick march! <coughs> <coughs> I have nothing else to say. So now that the units have been roughly explained, let's talk about siege weapons, hmm? You have three choices for offensive siege weapons. Catapults, battering rams, and siege towers. Ever seen Lord of the Rings Two Towers? Yeah, all of these are used in that movie. If you haven't seen Lord of the Rings, battering rams are used to break down the front gate. These are especially useful on castles because you can use the battering ram to break down the interior keep as well. Catapults are used to break down exterior walls. Siege engines are one-time used towers which will immediately breach a wall. There is one more type of siege unit, the pot of oil, which looks like a really gross olive, or a black cheerio. It rolls around doing its own thing. All siege devices are heavily armored, including the oil. If the oil is poured out, it will cause the ground to be set on fire, and any units standing in the fire will quickly lose health and die. I mean, just, just look at his own men. Friendly fire is a thing when it comes to fire. Uh, pun not intended. Oh, and for further explanation, something which confused little Atratsu about this game, the health each unit has isn't actually the health that's being represented. You see, each unit's health is actually a person in that division. So any health lost is actually people dying. So when you look at the end game stats, you're just like, wow. We lost three men. How did that happen? That means that somebody took damage at some point and people died. Okay. 
I've said a lot of really good things about Lords of the Realm 2. But before someone thinks I'm too biased about the game, let me say, it's not perfect. Not even by a long shot. If I had a dollar for every time my unit would get stuck, or path improperly, or regroup up when I didn't want them to, I don't know how much money I'd have, but I'd have enough to take us all out for lunch. And then there's the obvious problems you'll run into when playing an older game like this one. The footage you see in this review is taken from launching the game through Steam. But when it launches, it doesn't have the Steam overlay, it resizes the screen, messes with my secondary monitor, and just generally messes around with my computer display. You can't play it window mode or anything like that. Additionally, you can't adjust any of these settings either, so it sets itself up to whatever it was with the Windows 95. What is that? The 400 by 400 pixels or something? It's really tiny. I have heard GOG is better at handling games, but I have no experience on how their client works with Lords of the Realm 2. You could always look into using DOSBox, for those of you who are very tech savvy and have tons of free time to burn. I also noticed the scrolling speed isn't very smooth either, but there are at least a few settings you can adjust for the scroll speed. It wouldn't be a... However, the scrolling speed wouldn't be a problem if you could just adjust the screen size. So you can make it bigger than looking through a hole in a Rice Krispie box. In conclusion, this is just another game that I absolutely love. Judging by the Steam reviews and general online presence for Lord of the Realm 2, it seems I'm not the only one either. I actually picked up the Lords of the Realm Complete bundle on Steam, so I could review Lords of Magic, Lords of the Realm 1, 2, and 3. Oh, Lords of the Realm 3. <sighs> Let's not review Lords of the Realm 3. It's a silly place. In the end, I don't know if this review will help tempt you to play the game, or just entertain you as I reminisce over one of my favorite games, but hopefully you were either entertained, informed, or inspired. My name is Atratsu, and I approve this review. The addition of this shire to your lands brings the whole country within your grasp. I am ruined, my noble friend, but I am not bitter. Shall return. Where to this time? Okay, my lord. Open my ready. Lord. Yes. At your service. Lord. What now? Quick. Let's march. get digging. Ho. Oh. All right. My lord. Yes, my lord. What now? Let's get digging. Ho. Oh. Look out. Excellent. We'll enjoy this. Excellent. Leave it to us, sir. Excellent. We'll enjoy this. Excellent. Those damn fools. Dig in for honor and glory! Dig in for England! Dig in for the throne! This is the weirdest sh I've ever done. <laughs> Whoa! Dig, 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 dig in! Whoa! Ho! Whoa! Ho! Let's get digging! My lord? Yes? My lord? What now? Lightning! Ready! Archers! Ready! Iceberg! Ready! <laughs> ah! Can I be excused? <laughs> <laughs>